Okay, so good morning, and uh, uh, so today I will be sort of giving some hints about the the construction of Frankel Lepowski environment of the Moonshine module, and uh, and hopefully with Professor Ivanov's lectures there will be nice. Looks like there will be a lot of synergy, and uh, so. So let's. Uh, this was the last slide from uh, last uh, lecture, and uh, we sort of saw that uh, if uh, we have, I mean, this is sort of uh, in, in conformal field theory. We we sort of say that uh, a partition function in the chiral theory is typically of the form of theta by eta, and uh, this is the this is what we have in mind. And here we have the theta series for the E8 root lattice, or and is just eta power eight, and uh, this just happens to be. But today, what we are going to do is to ask: uh, Is there some structure which will give this combination? And uh, uh, that is something which we will see. And this is what actually understanding this. And uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, FLM have two different ways of looking at getting the same answer. And uh, uh, they. Uh, Went ahead and replaced this E8 with the root lat uh, with the leech lattice, and if you replace eta of tau by the discriminant, you you get uh, the, J, the J function with the, uh, uh, J plus 24, of course. And uh, but so uh, so that's the analog of this. But they tried to extend the second construction, which is given here, and uh, uh, and it, what it did was to give a different answer, and the answer was without. Okay, so this is a long story, uh, cut short, and uh, the, this is what I'm going to try to show in, in the rest of this lecture. And uh, again, I want to point out I'm a physicist, and here, especially these calculations in vertex operator algebra, I had to translate it from, I mean, what is easy way for me into language which should be accessible to you. And uh, hopefully, I have not made mistakes. Uh, there are these beautiful lectures by Mason, which he gave in 2011 at Heidelberg, which is where I use my notation, and I had to condense his stuff, but that, uh, that one is very good. And I'm giving a tutorial kind of thing where I've given all the references, including links, and if you access the PDF file, it's clickable. Okay, so let's continue. So uh, don't get scared. I mean, this is just a, a thing to tell you about quantum fields. So let me be some linear space. A quantum field is a formal power series, so you don't worry anything about convergence. A of z is just sum over a n, and just remember this mode expansion. It is z power minus n minus one. So n goes with a, a negative power, positive n. Uh, okay, up to that shift. And uh, so, <clears throat> with an additional condition that if you pick some vectors in this uh, vector space, uh, it uh, it uh, so it's just an operator, it's a, it belongs to endomorphisms of V. So A n of V will become zero for suitably large. Okay, this is a condition. And uh, so let's just call this uh, the field of, uh, uh, field of, uh, field of uh, or the space of fields. And uh, it just says that A of Z belongs to endomorphisms of V, which is a formal power series in Z and Z is the inverse, with the condition that it's a field. And the field condition has this extra. And uh, so we'll start with some definitions, fairly heavy, but uh, uh, we will go into examples, and the examples will be our answer. Kind of interesting. Okay, so uh, so you start with uh, uh, it's a quadruple. Uh, it is uh, v is a linear space, and uh, so it consists of a linear space v, which has a distinguished vector one. And uh, an endomorphism d from b to v, which satisfies the condition that uh, d acting on one is zero, and a linear injection from y from v to space of fields. So this is uh, the key, and uh, the, this one is very important. What it does is what it tells you is that if you give me an element in the vector space, you're going to give me an operator or a field. Okay, and uh, so the, so this is the key. And uh, there are many ways of stating this condition, but uh, this, is the, this is one way which is closer to physics. 
uh, the way we think about it. And uh, so it says that if you have two operators, so you and V belong to V. So you get two operators, and you you bring uh, you. So this is y of u at z1 and y at v at z1. You're composing them, and the thing is that you multiply it by some positive power of z minus z2 power n. There is some positive integer, and here if you see here, they're just the things reversed. So you could write it as uh, the commutator, and you're asking what it says is that. Uh, 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 it's some kind of commutativity. It has actually much more detail than that, but it says that if n is large enough, it uh, it uh, it uh, it will vanish. That's what it says. Okay. So uh, I mean, uh, uh, just thinking in terms. Forget about fancy things. Because if you think in terms of functions, and uh, if you have, uh, I mean, you have some function uh, f of z, g of w, uh, or let's do something f of z w, and you're told that z minus w power n goes to zero. That sort of suggests that f of z uh, and, uh, goes to zero. Uh, yeah. And we could do things like take limit uh, z tending to zero, z tending to w, and then this will tell you that this, can have, this, is, uh, this function will be singular as z comes to zero, w. Okay, so uh, that's the, uh, so, and this is telling you how singular it has become. Roughly, this is the way we think in physics. And then this y has the following property called creativity, which says that y of u and z, so your u is, in other words, you pick a vector u in v, convert it to an operator, and make it act on one, and what you get is u plus order z. So in particular, if you take z to zero, that term kind of drops out. Remember, everything is formal, but still, we, will, uh, we can look at this. You actually get back u. And this uh, uh, D, uh, is, uh, D has this translation covariance, which says that D, uh, uh, the commutator of D with Y is just the derivative with respect to Z. Very, very simple. So in physics term terminology, and I'll keep using that uh, in part because we just call an element of uh, V, we call it a state. And uh, already I've been using, we call Y is a vertex operator. I've been calling it an operator. And... Uh, so uh, there are many definitions of locality and many different identities as Borchers identity, but in principle, you should be able to get them from the same identity. So it's a nice exercise in just taking power series and matching powers of Z1 and Z2. And, uh, making it do. It's a little tedious, but not hard. So this, this quadruple is a vertex algebra. Huh? It's just a space of fields. So. Uh, uh, Here's the definition. So, yeah. Uh, so here it is. Here, here, here's the thing. A of z belongs to endomorphs formally. I mean, endomorphisms of v uh, valued in the power series formally, in the formal power series, such that A of z equal to zero. And there's a condition here. So, uh, these are the only uh, the the objects we are looking at should be such that for uh, for uh, the, uh, for some large enough n, a n of v is zero. So it should annihilate things after some point. That's what. That's the definition. It's not so, I mean, it's just some space of objects. You just think of it that way. I mean, it's, it's good enough. Okay. Uh, so uh, vertex operator algebra is extra structure on top of a vertex algebra. So it's a vertex algebra. And uh, so it's first, it's a vertex algebra, V, Y, 1, and D, together with a distinguished vector, omega, called the Virasoro vector. And the modes, and so, but we know that since there is a y, I can create an operator, which is y omega z, which is just written like this. Only point here is that uh, we should have written omega n plus 1. I'm just, uh, there's a shift involved, and I'm calling it uh, ln, okay? And uh, so, uh, because it has to match conventions, and this is a huge warning, is that you should look at conventions, and the physics and the math conventions are not the same. So in physics, we, we shift our, our mode expansion definition based on uh, the dimension of the field, whatever that means. And while in math, it's a uniform thing. Oh, yeah, sometimes it's M. I, I try to write all my power series with M, so this should be M. Thank you, I'll correct it. Okay, so, uh, so it satisfies this uh, interesting algebra. And uh, a simplest way of uh, seeing this 
algebra without with k equal to zero is to just consider uh, the following uh, operator, which are vector fields on a circle, and uh, you sort of identify this with LM, and you work out the Lie brackets, you will recover the, the width algebra, I think it's called. And uh, so, and K will act on this V with a scalar called central charge. So in the previous lecture, we saw central charge was 24 or something for, so that's the kind of thing. And L0 is a semi-simple operator on V. Its eigenvalues lie in Z and uh, are mounted from below uh, and all its eigenspaces are finite dimensional. And the last bit is important. D is actually L minus one. Okay, so this is just a warning, but now you can, it's a nice exercise, and I think I put this in the tutorial to show that uh, uh, it's, uh, so the commutator of uh, Y omega, Z, this should be Z1, uh, Z2 is zero. So it's, it says that it is self-local, okay? And, uh, and omega can be identified with this. So, so it's really, so, so this is the setup that we have, and uh, uh, so let us, uh, we need just a little bit more, and I, here I'll be even more schematic. And uh, so, yeah, so first we'll start, uh, given uh, vertex algebra, V, Y, 1, I'm hiding D out here, a V module is a linear space W, and a linear map now from Y, W, which goes from V to Space of fields on W. Okay, and then you can uh, you can again uh, you can write this kind of uh, uh, you can write a mode expansion, and this is normal with minus uh, okay? with y of one z or z is identity is acting as identity on W. Okay, and uh, the, uh, so now uh, the fields y w u z for u v are mutually local. And uh, one more thing is, uh, the thing, uh, important point here is, there is no analog of the vacuum vector, so you don't talk of uh, creativity. And uh, so for a VOA, there's additional uh, condition that, uh, they are, uh, that uh, it's a V module with the condition that LW of zero is semi-simple with finite dimensional eigenspaces. So what we should have in mind, if you remember, is uh, we, were, we are looking for this, uh, uh, module which uh, which was something like this. This is what we are want to construct. And the key point here is for any m, this is infinite dimensional, but for any m, this is finite dimensional. Okay, so this is uh, the thing, and the, and uh, this thing is, is uh, infinite. So we will actually construct a vertex operator algebra where this uh, this m will be identified with the L zero. So, so with these definitions, we'll go to an example. And uh, so many of the things I say, for instance here, they let L be an abelian Lie algebra of dimension L with a symmetric bilinear form, okay? But we could replace this by uh, other groups, but it'll make my thing more complicated and I have to say more things, so I'm just simplifying. And you can just define the affine Lie algebra associated with L, we'll just put a hat out here and it's L tensor C, it's a formal power series in T and T inverse, plus I did have some C of K with, uh, with a bracket, which is given this way. Okay. So, uh, uh, so the point here is, uh, so, the, so this will be an A tensor TM would be an element of L hat, and uh, so you can work out its bracket, and in principle there should have been, in, in the more general situation you would have something like this, it was a more general non-commuting. So A and B are in L. There would have been uh, that's the plus kind of things which I wrote there. But uh, since it's a commuting algebra, A B is zero, so there's just one uh, one simple thing. And uh, so what you do next is to do uh, the analog of uh, what's the triangle decomposition. You take L hat and break it up into L hat minus, L hat zero, and L hat plus. And uh, so the way I think of this, I think of plus as the annihilation operators, and I think of L minus as creation, 
and uh, L0 is just uh, L0 hat is uh, uh, in, in, it's isomorphic to L. Okay, so L minus are the negative modes. L0 is the zero guy, zero mode, and L plus is this thing. Okay, so you can go back and look at this algebra and see that uh, uh, L plus closes on itself, L minus closes on itself, and uh, so. So suppose you're given, let W be equal to C V0 be a trivial L module. Okay, very simple. And then we can just extend capital W to, uh, capital W to uh, L, uh, L0 hat plus L, L hat plus module in a very, very simple way. Say that all of L plus annihilates W. This is a, I, I don't know, this standard construction. And uh, so, and then, uh, and K acts uh, with a scalar, which is equal to L, in this case the rank. Uh, maybe it can be different, but we'll choose it to be L. And then, so, there, so you get an induced module, and what is that? You start from uh, uh, this thing and act with uh, the, uh, the symmetric, uh, all. Uh, basically this is just uh, S of L is a free algebra in L minus. So you take all possible generators and you get a huge space, and we'll just call this V, L, L, C of V. So this is this uh, uh, induced module that you've constructed. So fairly simple construction, and uh, but uh, a nice news is that this is a vertex algebra with this as uh, uh, as uh, the uh, we call this in physics the current uh, uh, defined. Okay, and this has a natural action of spin, and uh, so. And one more thing, one exercise one can do is one can check that the, uh, it's, uh, these are mutually local. So you remember these were the axioms, so we need to check that, and this is true for this guy. And, uh, but now actually this is the part which people might find a little bit complicated, that it's a vertex algebra is this thing, but it turns out that actually it, it's a vertex operator algebra, and uh, uh, this, uh, there is a particular construction which uh, in physics we call it the Sugawara construction, which gives you, uh, which uh, works for all affine Katsumuri algebras. You give me, uh, you write it out like what we did in the previous slide, replace, uh, replace uh, L with any, uh, any of your favorite ADE V algebras, and you will get the corresponding uh, uh, affine uh, thing at level one. Okay, so, so what you find is that, now this is not something I'm going to prove, that it's a vera, that is a virus over a vector, and uh, uh, so there's some notation here. So you choose uh, an orthonormal. So I remember L has as a uh, as a as a uh, symmetric bilinear form. So you can choose an orthonormal basis for it, and its central charge is the same L. Okay, it just uh, so, and this vector space uh, V L C V zero is created by L zero, and what it does is it also asserts roughly what you're supposed. So you look at this guy, and it associates, so this is one of the L minus guys, and it associates a degree M root, uh, or the L0 eigenvalue of this state with M. So now you can also ask, uh, you know, you, uh, what is the dimension of, uh, of the subspace of degree M? And uh, there are many ways of thinking about it. Uh, I'll play with partitions, and this for me, tells me that uh, it is equal to, so that if the L, you remember, was the rank, and uh, so, uh, uh, so here, this, uh, at any M, because how many terms are going to be there, it's equal to the number of partitions of uh, M into L colors. So suppose uh, two colored partitions, for instance, partitions of four in one would be, uh, you know, four, three, one, two, 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 one, one, and, uh, so on and so forth, but now I can have, when I have two colors, I, I will write things like this. I keep. And I'll stop here. So you can ask how many of these things are there, and Euler's argument can be generalized. If there was one color, the generating function was one minus Q power N, product of that, this is Euler's formula, and uh, if you want for L-colored partitions, it is, the generating function is just this, okay? So, but, uh, 
so so what this uh, so this yeah, this is uh, this uh, in our sense will give you a sum over dimension of vm okay so very very simple computation but there's one change that you need to multiply this by what is called the central charge and this for you I was told was l so it is q power minus l by 24 so it's something which just goes for the ride I mean, there are deep reasons for this to be there, but uh, that's uh, something I will. So this we will define. And uh, so if you look here, if we needed this guy to make this into 1 by eta. OK, so uh, uh, if you go back and remember the theta e8, there was an eta power 8 coming out there. And so uh, what we should expect is that uh, it will come from some VOA, which has a part, which has L such L. So this is the Heisenberg VOA with L scalar fields, or whatever, OK? And that is the physics language for this. And so and this we will call a definition of this. This is a partition of the VOA, OK? So the partition function is defined to be something. So roughly, you have some formally, you take it's an infinite module, and it is graded by some L0, and most people will write Q here, as I explained to you, because it's, things are formal, but I, I think in terms of modular forms, where it actually makes sense. Okay. So, so that's our first example, and the second example is, if you're given a lattice, can we construct a VOA, and the answer is, Answer is yes, and uh, so we will choose L to be an even lattice. That means if you give any vector in the lattice, its length will be two, uh, divisible by two, even. Okay. If it's odd, you don't. I mean, it's uh, you can work with it, but it's not what is called a VOA. It's called a super VOA. But so we'll ignore such complications, and uh, so let L be an even lattice of rank L associated with a symmetric bilinear form L cross L to Z. And from last lecture, you can just choose Q of x to be this. So these two go back and forth. And you set h to be c tensor over z times l and extend the bilinear form to h. Standard, simple stuff. So now, but the point here is h is an abelian Lie algebra. And of course, there is a, so we can use the result from this thing. And there is a Heisenberg VOA, V of l, c of v not associated with it. OK, so now what we are going to do is to construct something even bigger, okay? And uh, what uh, what we should keep in mind is that we should think of this guy as corresponding to, uh, so let's say beta is some vector in the lattice, this corresponds to beta equal to zero. And we'll construct something for uh, for other, other uh, uh, elements of, uh, of L. Okay, so, so we'll start, where we'll fix some beta, which is in L. And let uh, c e power beta be the linear space spanned by e power beta. At this point, this is just a formal thing. And this can be made into an h module in the following way. So you just uh, you take elements of alpha, and you this is the definition that's an inner product. So alpha acting on e power beta is just the inner product of alpha with beta times e power beta for all alpha, for any alpha which belongs to. So, uh, so in particular, you can see that if beta is zero, uh, this uh, this is uh, this looks exactly like the condition we would have, uh, we had uh, earlier because uh, uh, in that case, uh, even we took the trivial module, so nothing. Uh, okay, so that so that should correspond to the trivial module, and uh, sorry, so that uh, would be like uh, formally e power zero. So now we can uh, we can do a little bit of work. One can uh, construct v beta, again, as v of l uh, c e power beta. So this is, this is thought to be as a v l c v 0 module. So it's a module over the Heisenberg algebra with l elements. OK? And uh, so, but again, using similar arguments, uh, I mean, what you do here is you go back and you can ask, I mean, you can do it even here. 
which is to go ahead and uh, decompose H into H hat plus, H hat minus, and this thing, we just called it L, I think, in the previous slide. And, uh, and uh, this, uh, the full space is just got by, by annihilating the H pluses, and, H, and again, the symmetric, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, arbitrary symmetric powers of H hat minus will give the full, uh, full module. Okay, and a uh, little bit thought will show you that uh, this, uh, I mean, this is uh, in some sense has the same, uh, if you want to ask uh, how, uh, um, I'm actually, I shouldn't say anything more. I'll, hold, I'll say, say it later. Okay, so now the whole idea here is to uh, take these modules. So, you, so for every beta, we have a Heisenberg module. And, uh, and of course, the Heisenberg module is also part of it. And uh, Heisenberg uh, VOA is also part of it. And let's define V of L to be formally the sum over all the full lattice. So it's a huge, huge object. And, uh, but uh, you can just, uh, one thing which we observed was that it didn't matter what was here. This dot is just S of H at minus, and that goes through. And uh, this can be rewritten. It's isomorphic to S hat of H, H minus tensor. Uh, direct sum of beta uh, <coughs> belonging to L, C of uh, the vector space of E over E. So this is what you get. And uh, we can, uh, so this, uh, we would like it to become a VOA. And how does it work? And uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going very fast today. Okay. Um, uh, so first thing is that uh, we'll identify V beta equal to zero with uh, the... Uh, with the uh, Heisenberg uh, VOA sitting inside the thing. And uh, so with one being equal to one tensor. Okay. Then uh, uh, we need to uh, ask, uh, we, we need to do maps. And for you belonging to V beta, uh, by the way, this part is something which I'm translating from things I know in physics. So there might be some imprecision in this particular slide. So, but I think I'm correct. Okay. So, uh, for u equal to v beta, the vertex operator u or uh, y of uz maps v alpha to v alpha plus beta. So it's acting as if uh, I mean uh, uh, this is just the usual addition in the in the uh, as an abelian group alpha goes to alpha plus beta. Okay, but uh, we need to uh, uh, assure, be sure that you get uh, locality. Mu uh, things are mutually local. And then you need to, uh, that creates some issues. And uh, the solution to that is actually very simple. And, uh, the, and that requires this, an extension, which I'm calling L tilde of L. OK. Uh, where? Oh, there is a, yes. L, yes, one L missing out here. So there's one more term in the sequence, L to 0. Thank you. And where Z2 is a group of order 2 generated by an element epsilon. Okay, so, uh, so the conditions you need, uh, and uh, this is the part which I know from physics and I have not verified here, but it should hold, is that it, uh, what you want is, uh, uh, so first thing is uh, for every beta belonging to L, you, uh, you create an element which we are calling E beta. That's what you need to do. But with this rule, that E power alpha, E power beta, is equal to epsilon times the inner product of alpha beta times e power beta e power alpha. So this you can see is a bunch of signs, and it's uh, if uh, and when alpha beta inner product is uh, is odd, you get a sign. Otherwise, you don't. Okay, and uh, and this is an extra condition for every beta e power beta to e power minus beta is this. Okay. Now the, the claim is that L hat is unique up to isomorphism. So now, uh, so with these things, it becomes a vertex algebra. But further, one can actually show that V of L is a VOA with central charge L. Okay, and in particular, the L zero eigenvalue of this state is uh, half of uh, beta of the norm of this. Okay, so now comes the interest. So now you remember we have required a lattice to be even, and that's what forces you. Uh, so that makes this integral. So it satisfies one of the, uh, we can check that one of the axioms of a VOA was that the L0 eigenbasis would be 
uh, would be uh, what do you call a, a, a integral and it is and it should be bounded from below in this case it's bounded from below by zero because our lattice is positive here. and uh, i'm not showing uh, uh, what the uh, uh, what omega is in this case but one can work out what that is and uh, but uh, for uh, just for uh, we'll only need this much detail from here and uh, so the partition function for this VOA this is, where, is the following. It is uh, theta of L times uh, divided by eta. So this is what we started out. So what we have, what this whole setup does for you, if you give me an even lattice, I will, uh, uh, you can construct a VOA from that. And the partition function for this is like this. And the way to see that is to go back here and look at this decomposition. So if you're doing the partition function, and this is like a direct product or a tensor product of these things, so we know that this part is what we, uh, we saw here. And uh, so this part will give you one upon eta power L, and this is just a, a formal sum over these guys. And uh, we know that the L0 eigenvalue is half beta beta, uh, half norm of beta. And so that's, uh, and that's, uh, uh, that's exactly uh, what we'll give. So, is this clear, what I'm saying? Because we'll now twist things more. So it has just two parts, and you just multiply it. Okay. So we need a, a, a few things. An automorphism of a VOA is an invertible map from V to V, such that it preserves uh, the, if you're a sort of vector, and also does the following thing that they, remember that uh, so it acts so let's say it takes maps v to g of v then uh, it should be conjugate uh, so this is in the operator side and this is on the vector space side they should be compatible that's what it said okay so this is uh, really and th this is very important because what it says is that uh, the action of g is not going to mess up the grading It'll, it'll, uh, because it, in some sense, this is equivalent to it commuting with zero in the real. Okay. So, but now you can ask, what is the automorphism group of the VOA? Obvious automorphisms are automorphisms of the lattice. But what we have is an extension L tilde of that thing. And uh, so, uh, and uh, what you end up getting is some two power rank of L dot automorphisms of L. And it, it's not uh, usually not split, so it's something you need to work it out. Okay. So, uh, so for instance, if we can take L to be root lattices for of the ADE type, the reason to look at ADE type is that there all the uh, I mean the evenness is guaranteed, and so there the automorphism of L is nothing but the Weyl group of the, this thing, and then you get this extension. Okay. So. So, so now the nice thing would be to actually go ahead and ask uh, what, what happens if we take our lattice to be the leech lattice, okay? So we know the partition function. It is now very clear. It will be theta for the leech lattice over delta because you get it is 24 dimensional. So you get for there will be 20, L is 24. So eta is over 24, okay? So, uh, so now before that, uh, just uh, some points which are already made in the previous talk, but uh, in, I'm just restating, Greece generated the monster group M as, uh, he, as follows. Uh, he, uh, uh, C is some uh, group, and sigma is an involution. This is related to the other construction which was mentioned, but uh, I mean, uh, where C is, uh, is 2 power 1 plus 24, it's a very special group, extension dot the first Conway group, okay? and. Uh, this C is actually a centralizer of the involution of uh, uh, the 2B involution in, uh, in, uh, in M. And sigma is some other involution. I'm not giving the details. Probably Professor Ivanov will give it uh, in C. Okay. And uh, so these C and sigma, the way Greece saw it was uh, they arose as automorphisms of an algebra acting on a space of dimension 19668844. Four or three, let's not quibble because the one is really doesn't act on that. So you can add a one. So it's not a big deal. 
but from the viewpoint of the algebra, I think uh, what happens is that with one added, it's an algebra which is non-associative, but it has a unit. So there's small changes. So, uh, so the thing here is that uh, uh, FLM, they observed that the VOA associated with the leech lattice has a subspace V2, which has this dimension. So these are, this is some calculation we've already done. Uh, this 24 is a bad thing, but we'll live with that. But if you look at this, so this V2 here is, has, uh, has uh, the right dimension to match this. So now, obviously, the question, uh, there was many reasons people thought that, uh, you know, uh, so the, uh, in the previous lecture, we saw that there were two routes to the monster in some sense. One went via uh, M24 to the Conway group and things like that. So, uh, so people thought that that was so automatic, the leash lattice was special and maybe there was something in there. And of course, it's the unique 25-dimensional uh, 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 self-dual lattice, which has uh, no roots. Okay. So, but now the thing is that automorphisms of the uh, automorphisms of lambda is Conway not uh, Conway not zero, and uh, it's, it's sometimes it is written as uh, dot o. Okay, and. Uh, the f and uh, f I'm not a mathematician by any stretch. The first time I saw this thing, I was wondering what on earth is this object? And uh, it didn't make sense to me at all because I look at it, it doesn't make sense. But it turns out that was Conway's notation for it. He so the convention is to use uh, the discoverer's name and this thing, and he didn't want to put his name, I guess. So his notation was dot o, dot one, dot two, dot three, okay, for the, these things. But uh, no, dot o is not simple. And uh, it's 2.c01. And so now, if you look at automorphism of L tilde, uh, it has the same order as C. Really tempting. It's almost correct. But it's not a very special group. It is not. Okay. It's, it's not. So the automorphism of this thing is not, uh, uh, not even, uh, you're not getting C. Correct. Okay. So, so, uh, so FLM solved this problem by considering the twisting of the leech VOA by a lattice involution. So, so their idea was that uh, was the I mean I mentioned if you uh, if they did a similar procedure twisting for the E8 case they got back the E8, okay. But in this case they don't get back the E8 case they get something else almost the same thing they get back but this 24 is gone. That's what uh, is the punchline. So uh, the word twisting is uh, abused so uh, in the recent round of uh, of. Uh, uh, what do you call uh, moonshine, uh, where Matthew and Umbrel moonshine, uh, some people, uh, a group proposed that uh, uh, we call it something twining. Okay? And you, I will explain to you what that is. It's, it's, twisting is a word which is kind of misused. So, so twining by an involution. So, let's, uh, so if you take any lattice, uh, uh, let T denote the involution that maps beta to minus beta. Okay, so in the Lie algebra language, it just takes all positive roots and maps them to the, and you can exchange positive and negative roots. That's all it does. Okay, and uh, it also acts as minus one on the abelian Lie algebra, and thus on the Heisenberg beam. So we get an involution which acts on this whole thing, and this can be lifted to an involution on the lattice VO as follows. So what you do is you take T, so remember you can write any element as U which belongs to uh, S of uh, H hat minus, and this is E power beta, which is in the L, and this just maps this thing. So U, is, U belongs to. Okay, so we can do something slightly more general, and uh, so let's call let G be an automorphism of the lattice VOA. So uh, now this is not necessarily uh, an involution of some finite order, and uh, and you define the twining partition like so. You just, uh, so if you put, uh, uh, you take, uh, you remember V can be decomposed into direct sum of these spaces Vm. In each space, uh, G has an action, okay, and it's an automorphism, so it doesn't, it's important that it doesn't have terms which go from, uh, it takes you out of the space. So uh, this is really nice, and there shouldn't be a comma here, it's just times Q power M. It's a formal thing, okay, and you see if I put G equal to identity, this becomes just uh, the dimension of the thing and you recover our first definition. So the, this is a picture which we use in physics and I don't know why it's not used in maths and maybe it's imprecise, so 
Uh, the idea here is that uh, this picture here says uh, that uh, pretty soon we'll see how to put something here. So this just says that uh, you insert, you have a trace over some the uh, space V, or the okay. And uh, so this is just defined to be trace over V G whatever you want. So we'll put Q power L zero. That is what this is uh, decomposing it into parts. But this is morally trace over the full space with the Q power L zero. So, uh, so, uh, so now, uh, so this is just a general definition. Now we'll go back to our involution, and in the involution case, uh, there's, uh, we can ask. Uh, so, uh, so what we're going to do is put t in here, and ask what do we get? Okay. So first thing to realize is what does t? How does it act on uh, on uh, e power beta? It maps beta to minus beta, so it takes e power beta to e power minus beta. So if you think in terms of matrices, if you think of it uh, writing T as a matrix acting on, uh, on the space, uh, you can see that when beta is non-zero, it's off diagonal. So it doesn't contribute to the trace. The only term which contributes to the trace is the invariant part of this thing, and that is beta equal to zero. And that is very simple. It's just a Heisenberg VOA. Okay? So, uh, so the only uh, non-zero contribution for the involution because it took beta to minus beta, it comes from u tensor e power zero. Of course, there is a further action on t, and you need to keep track of things, but uh, it's just some signs which you need to, it's simple, it's, uh, it's an elementary calculation. Maybe in the tutorial session, if somebody wants, I can work it out. What you get is a very simple answer, which can be written in terms of eta functions. You can I mean, write many other ways. Eta of tau divided by eta of two tau power eta. So, so there is no, and the key point here is there is no lattice sum because the lattice, uh, the, the contribution came from only one point in the whole lattice. That is important, okay? But there can be uh, more general involutions which uh, may have, uh, suppose you choose something which is not there, then you can ask what happens in the lattice. So then you will have, uh, you look for the sub lattice which uh, of uh, uh, where uh, the involution is invariant and then that will, only that subspace will contribute. So you will get some uh, some other partial sum. Okay. So, so, so now, uh, so this is just, uh, so this insertion here is what I will call twining. And later, we'll, now we'll do something which comes here. And then I'll call that twisting. Okay. So, uh, so let Vy be a VOA. And let G denote an automorphism of V of order N. Okay. So a G-twisted module. V module is a pair, WG and YG, consisting of a space, WG, and a map, YG, which is a map from V to the space of fields on W. Okay. And this is uh, how you, of, uh, you give me a U in V, I'll give you an operator on COM. So, and you can give this the usual mode expansion, and, but now comes the key thing, is that because this has uh, uh, the... Uh, the G as order N, uh, you end up with fractional moding. It's a little complicated to explain here, but it's actually fairly simple. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, here is an intuitive way of uh, seeing this. Suppose you you have a situation where uh, you know mm, uh, you have a periodicity or whatever. Let's say something like this. Uh, maybe I no, I won't make wrong analogy. The way I think about it, but that's okay. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to get fractional moding, which is determined by this. And uh, how do you understand that? That is because uh, G. So for so uh, so this fraction, uh, yeah, this is determined by the action of G. So on you. So what you can do is so G power n is identity, and let's assume it's a real representation, not projective representation. Then you can always choose u to be. Uh, I mean, you can choose u such that it's an eigen. Uh, so it uh, maps g of u is a phase times u. Okay. And we'll have an extra condition that y g of uh, of the identity uh, of one is the identity. Okay. There are many many more conditions, but uh, let's not get into that because we need to. Uh, so, but now uh, the the additional thing is. 
uh, the, uh, the L0 eigenvalue of states in the V module are bounded from below by not zero, but by its conformal weight. We have seen something similar which happened even in the Heisenberg module. What happened is that uh, there was a difference between how H, uh, the, the H0 acted on, uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the initial state, right? It acted differently. And this is similar to that. And uh, so you get, so what you get is uh, W of G decomposes now, but with this A G and this fractional symmetries. But it's still some uh, thing. And now it is bounded from below by A G. Okay. So modulo this fractional stuff, it is still very similar to this thing. We can again define the partition function as, uh, as, uh, as like this by putting in uh, Q power L0 and then because the lowest, uh, it's bounded from below from AG, you can pull out one term and it will have a structure. Okay, so going back here, uh, if you look here, M equal to zero, which is where it starts, will start from L0 eigenvalue starts from AG. And so you pull that out. So instead of getting Q power minus C by 24, what you get is Q power C by 24 plus C. So this is what you get. And uh, now let us go back to our example and let, uh, let us now consider the Leach VOA. In this case, the Z of uh, lambda, capital lambda T, was a modular function of the full modular group. And let T denote the involution. And now I'm going to change notations of calling it WG. I'll just call it V. Again, it should have been capital lambda for the Leach lattice of G. Denoted the twisted module. Okay. Now comes the, uh, so, so now, uh, This was trace with G insertion and stuff here. And with one put in here. Okay. So uh, these two, uh, uh, I mean, are different. Uh, one we defined here, and the other one was defined the twining guy. But uh, here is the deal uh, under uh, this where. It's important that I say it's the leech lattice because there could be other stuff happening where it's for the full modular group and there the S transformation is there. And uh, this is, now, again, a very, uh, very intuitive thing. What you can do is the S transform of, uh, of uh, this. Under S, these two go back to each other. Okay, and there's an intuitive geometric way of uh, seeing this. And uh, you, literally, you think of this as a torus. Okay, in the physics language, this is how I would think. As uh, You can think of uh, torus by taking a square and identifying these things. You can make it a modular, and the tau is the modular parameter on this torus. And what you're doing here, so we just call this as uh, space and time or whatever. Just not a convention, but the idea is that you impose boundary. When you go from here to here, you don't, it's supposed to be identified, but you come back to G times itself. While in this case, you, do, you come in this way of going. And this is just exchanging that. And the S transformation is really exchanging in geometrically, it's exchanging the A and B cycles. Okay, so that is the intuition behind this uh, statement. But now you can, so now I'm not, I'm going away from VOA, I'm using the modularity story. And this looks like something I have complicated to compute. So I just look, take the modular transform of this. And we know that this is a modular function. So there's no phases, nothing, nothing coming in front. So it is just T, uh, it's an insertion of T and minus one upon T. And, but this is something we just computed. It's a modular transform. We can just, we can use properties of eta function uh, and we can work it out and you get this. You can also rewrite this in terms of eta functions, but I'm not doing that because I want to look at this in a particular way. And uh, this two power 12 is not a mistake. Okay, and you, if you look here, that the coefficient, so it's, uh, it starts off with half, which says that h the, is half, okay? So, uh, so we see that, uh, sorry, not a is, uh, yeah. So, no, half is, uh, sorry, half is uh, c by 24 uh, minus c, uh, so yeah, so, so, the, so h is, uh, so, what we have is half is equal to minus c by 24 plus h. So h is c by 24 plus half. c is 24. So it's 1 plus 1 half. It's 3 half. OK, 
Okay, so we, we actually get, this is telling you lots of things. And uh, this is not something very obvious, but this 2 power 12 says that there are, uh, this, uh, the, the, uh, that uh, there are uh, uh, 2 power 12 states with the same value of h. And uh, so these actually sit in, uh, uh, in, a tw uh, in a representation of this thing and uh, of, uh, of this extra special group. So we see something nice coming out. And uh, so we need, uh, I need only a few more minutes. So what you do here is, so we have uh, an involution T, and you do one more thing to get what is called an orbifold VOA. So, uh, so the, the idea, so what we have is two spaces here, a V lambda, which is the original uh, thing without any twisting, nothing. And the second one is the G to, uh, T twisted guy. And uh, there are, I mean, if there were, uh, if there was, uh, if, uh, if it was a discrete group of order n, there will be more such uh, sectors. We call them twisted sectors for every element of the group. There will be one twisted sector, but here there's an element of order two, so we get only two things. This plus is important. So you go to this, uh, so this uh, V lambda is some space, big space. You project onto the T invariant states. The plus implies that. Okay? Similarly, do the same thing for uh, this twisted sector, you need, uh, need to figure out how it acts on the twisted sector states, but that you can do. And then uh, you, uh, this space, so this uh, space after projecting down these two spaces is what FLM called V natural. And this is the monster module. Okay, how do we see that? You go back and you do this computation, Z of V hash, and you do partition functions for this. And we have most of the data, so uh, for that, we need to do only one more thing, which is this projection, which I will not discuss because I'm out of time. But if you just com compute this thing, and I've written this nicely, so this is, uh, uh, so the projection can be thought of as an insertion of one plus t by two, because it's a group of order t, you can project onto t invariant states. So you can, you can see this is the half plus z of v lambda, which is the un, uh, I mean, untwisted sector. This is the twining guy, where you inserted a t. And if you expand this, uh, if you, both we know the answers, you just expand it, it goes like Q inverse plus 98580. This fellow, this term we have already seen. This is from the uh, uh, insertion, uh, so, that, uh, so that, would, that term comes from something which I will say is like this PT. Okay, there's a, and uh, so this 2 power 11, I think of it as 2 power 12 times a half to match this. And so you get uh, this uh, kind of term, and if you expand it, there's a cancellation, the constant term drops out, and the first term is 98304Q, and you add these two, bingo, you get, uh, oh, this should be four, not three, and uh, so, again, I want to make this four. So the 1896884 dimensional subspace V2 of V hash with L0 eigenvalue 2 provides a setting for the degree size. So again, the naive guess would have been that it is the algebra of vertex uh, uh, operators of y of u z where u belongs to v2. But the problem with this is that uh, if you take uh, y and uh, make it act on v2, it can take you outside the space. Okay, and uh, there's a layer, so one more uh, thing which is inter yeah. So no, let me not say that. So uh, so what uh, what you need to do is uh, you you need to figure out is there some way of making it. Uh, stay in the space, and uh, FLM have a beautiful trick. Uh, it's called, uh, which uh, the, it's a symmetrization of this algebra. It has to be compatible with the thing, but it is. It's a cross product which removes those un unwanted terms. It has the same structure as the Greece algebra. The final part of the story is to show that the automorphism group of the VOA associated with, uh, with V natural is a monster. Okay, since it is compatible with the L zero grading. The automorphism of the full VOA should also act on the Greece algebra. So it will be the automorphism of the Greece algebra at least, or at least some subspace. And but uh, to see the full action, there's another way. There's a twofold route to go to. Uh, the, uh, so uh, in fact, in the previous lecture, he mentioned that there were 23 constructions of uh, the Leach lattice from the other 23 Niemeyer lattices. And you take one of these Niemeyer lattices. Uh, it's not the root lattice of A1 power 24. Uh, a1 times 24, but uh, it is that plus some stuff added to it. Uh, and uh, you take that and you do a particular uh, uh, 
and uh, 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 Z2 orbifold, again an involution, you take that thing and this thing, you get the leech lattice, and then you do this thing. But instead of that, what you do is, you work with the four group, which is uh, Z2 times Z2, Z2 cross Z2, and you do a single orbifolding, and then the answer will look like, it's a sum of uh, uh, four sectors, untwisted sector, uh, and uh, for, so basically there's a sector for every element of the group, and uh, there's a symmetry with, among the three twisted sectors. They all give a symmetry which is called triality, and you can actually see a lot of the constructions of, uh, of uh, Greece, Tates, and Conway in the context of uh, this thing appear directly in this setting. Okay, but remember this my, this algae, this my, this uh, VOA acts on the full space, not just the center. Okay, the, okay, so I'll just conclude here, and uh, proof of conjecture by Borchards actually involves working with a unique uh, even uh, uh, with the unique even uh, Lorenzian unimodular lattice of signature 25 comma one. You can and you can show it's isomorphic to Leach. Uh, times uh, 211, which is the uh, 11, uh, it's, uh, it's a unique uh, guy, uh, sort of even uh, the lattice in, uh, in 1, 1. Okay. So what, uh, this is a very clever trick. What it does is, uh, the, the point was, uh, the problem in, uh, uh, which was there in, uh, in the FLM construction was that it was, uh, uh, that there was, uh, the first non-trivial guy happened at V2. V1 was zero, trivial. There's no space, okay? So what he did was to put, uh, do, uh, replace that thing, and he got a uh, Lie algebra. So, uh, so the, uh, uh, of a new kind, and which he called the generalized uh, Borchardt's, uh, generalized Katsumuri algebra, which, which uh, we call now Borchardt's Katsumuri algebra. And uh, the wild denominator formula for this became algebra, and various twisted, for every twisted version, there's an algebra twisted, uh, the algebra imply replication formula for the Maquet Thompson series to be of that. And that actually completes the proof. But he needs to do a case by case check. But the key point is he needs to only do a check for five, first five coefficients. So he has to do five into 171 checks, okay. which is uh, this thing. And I must just mention that there's been a lot of work on moonshine associated with the largest Mathieu group that relates conjugacy classes of M24 to Jacobi forms, genus two Sigler forms, and Borchardt's. Uh, Kaksmodi superalgebras, and this is something I've been working on, I have contributed to and worked on. Thank you. <laughs>